So Sony have released the ZV E10 Mark II. And I'm assuming you're watching this video because you want to know everything about it, all the new features, all the upgrades, and ultimately, is it worth buying and is it worth the price point that it's been set at? Well, in this video, I'm going to go over the six major changes on the Sony ZV E10 Mark II, and then I'm going to tell you if it is worth buying or not, or whether you should consider something else. Starting off with the sensor, this has a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. Now, ultimately, it's the exact same sensor that's in the Sony FX30, which is the cinema line entry level camera for Sony's professional lineup. Now, it has the same sensor, but it just overheats quicker is the, is the, is the bottom line for this one but it does have an upgraded sensor. Now the last one on the ZV-E10 Mark I was a 24 megapixel sensor. This one is 26 megapixels, which might not sound like a lot, but it also covers 15 stops of dynamic range. It includes up to 10 of Sony's new picture profiles. So you can have color grading already done in the image without having to record in S-Log3 and then do all the color grading yourself. You can just record in a base image like I do with this video. This is on the Sony a7 IV. This is one of the picture profiles with a little bit of color grading done to it just to sharpen it up a little bit. So it just makes your color grading process a lot simpler. This also is enabled to record at 10-bit color which gives you a much, much bigger, wider range of colors to choose from when you're color grading and will make it look a lot sharper. Now, the bottom line here is, do you need 10-bit color to make YouTube videos? No, absolutely not. So it depends what you're using this for. If you want to use this camera to make some creative videos and YouTube videos and that sort of thing, 8-bit color is absolutely fine. If you want to use it for professional client work, then yes, you might want to upgrade so you can shoot in 10-bit color. Or if you just like editing in 10-bit color, then that's a choice you're going to have to make for yourself. For me personally, I have the a7 IV, as I've already said, and any YouTube videos I make, I film in 8-bit color because it's just easier to color grade and I use one of the picture profiles because it just streamlines my process. If I'm doing any sort of client work, then I record in S-Log3 using 10-bit color. So it just depends on what your use case for this camera is. But ultimately, it does have the same sensor as the Sony FX30, but it's about eight or 900 pounds cheaper. So just bear that in mind. This can record in 4K60, which is oversampled from 6K. So it records 6K footage and then condense it down to 4K, which will give you a much sharper looking image. Now, 4K60, so you can get that nice buttery smooth slow motion and you can record it in 1080p as well. That 4K60 is really nice. You just have to bear in mind that it will start to overheat if you're recording at 60 frames per second for long periods of time. Number four is the fact that we have a full size battery. So if you have a variety of Sony cameras, maybe you've got an FX3 for your filmmaking, maybe you've got a Sony a7 IV or R5 for photography and maybe you want something else just to chuck in your bag as an extra camera or b-roll camera or something like that the zve 10 mark ii now has the same battery as all of sony's premium line of cameras so you can just have one type of battery and have multiple of them and keep them in your bag and you can interchange them between cameras this will also increase the battery time and the runtime of your camera by about 45 percent from people that i've seen testing it at number five, it has a new and improved autofocus system and menu system. And one of the nice features about this is when you flip the camera into vertical mode and you hold it vertically, it will change the menu to come up on a vertical format, which is nice if you're recording short form content for YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, that sort of thing. Also, you have to remember that Sony's autofocus system is arguably the best in the market. It's super snappy, super sharp, and you can also have that product showcase mode where if you hold something in front of the camera, then it, if, if your face is still in frame, you see on this image that my face is still in focus. Whereas if I'd in product showcase mode, my hand would be in focus. So Sony's autofocus system is a really, really good system to have and it's arguably one of the best. And lastly, this camera has a new and improved microphone. Now, is it the best in the world? No, 
but it is improved. It can now detect in front of the camera and behind it. So if you was filming in front of you and vlogging and talking from behind the camera, it would pick up your voice from behind and it would still sound really good. Whereas on the old version, it didn't have that feature. Now it's still not gonna sound like the best in the world. If you're in a room like this, which is soundproofed or sound treated, then it will work. But if you're out and about and you've got wind, you've got ambient noise, you've got a load of background stuff, you're in an echoey room, then it might it won't work so well. So I'd always recommend having a, a, a external microphone with your camera, but it's not bad for a built-in camera. Things like the cinema line cameras don't even have microphones. So just to have it built into the camera is a nice feature to have. So what are my final thoughts on the ZV-E10 Mark II and should you get it? Well, I think this sits a very sort of unique price point because there's other cameras and other options out there, not just from Sony, that are maybe cheaper or if you spend a little bit more money, you're going to get a little bit better. So here's what I think. So you've got the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, the original version, sits at, if you look on Amazon Prime Day or Black Friday, you can get it with the kit lens for about £600 there or thereabouts, which is a really, really good deal. Alternatively, you've got something like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. You can get the Creator Combo, which comes with the um, DJI Mic 2 and loads of other bits and bobs. You can get that for £620. Now that... Is it as good as a professional mirrorless camera? No, but the footage is still pretty damn good and it's more than enough for what you need. If you want to do some quick B-roll, some quick filming, if you want to do vlogging, if you want to make YouTube videos, this is more than enough. Or if you want to, it to look more professional, then I would just get the original ZV-E10 Mark I and you, you will save yourself 400 pounds. If you want to have a professional camera and you want to invest in it and it's going to last you a long time and you want to use it for client work and all that sort of thing bear in mind you've got the sony zve1 which will be two thousand pounds which is a full frame sensor which has pretty much everything that the fx3 has which is the best of the best but it will just overheat a lot quicker and it's not it's not going to run for as long but that is still a great option alternatively you've got the fx30 which is £1,500. So if you want to spend just £500 more, you can get a cinema line camera, which has the same sensor as the ZV-E10 Mark II, the same performance, but it will just last longer and just be better overall because it's that premium line of cinema cameras. So I think if you have exactly £1,000 or just over $1,000 to spend on a camera and you want to use it for YouTube videos or some B-roll and that's exactly what you want to spend, then yes, I would get the ZV-E10 Mark II. If you want to just make YouTube videos, then I would get the Osmo Pocket 3 or the Mark I. And if you want to just spend a bit more and get a premium camera that's going to be able to use for a variety of use cases, then I will get the FX30 or the ZV-E1. So I hope that wasn't a little bit too overwhelming, but I just think it's a bit of an odd price point. I think personally they should have kept it at the same price or maybe just increased it by a couple of hundred pounds to like 800, like maybe 799 or something like that. I think a thousand pounds for this camera, for what it is, is a bit much for me personally. Uh, I would either get the original or I would just get the ZV-E1 would be my personal opinion. Um, but it's up to you. Let me know in the comments whether you're going to be buying this camera or not and the reasons why you're going to use it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you are new here and you want to know all the latest tech videos and tech updates, then please subscribe to the channel. But if you want to know how good the Osmo Pocket 3 is, the Creator Combo for £619, then click this video up here. I'm going to point at it with the Osmo Pocket 3 and that will tell you how good this camera really is and why I use it every single day.